Hello? Uh, it's coming. Okay. That's hey. right. Hey, good. Good afternoon. Welcome to Match Day. Uh, I'm Vince Gansberg with United Soccer Coaches, and with us today we have a very we have a very special presentation. Um, we have Marcelo Serrano. Marcelo, can you say hello? Hello. <laughs> Make sure we got you good. And then um, also we have Tiago Pinto, who's already been on twice, but he's actually going to come on as a moderator for this and to help me with, with the presentation. But uh, the, the overall theme of the presentation is to talk about why we coach, right? What's our purpose? So, Marcelo, first off, thank you so much for taking time and, and oh, away. Pleasure. From being on. And then, oh, our boss jumped in there. So, uh, boss Ian Barker just jumped in. I don't know if you two know each other, but. Uh, I think we've run into each other a couple of times. Not competitively, though, so that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. And then, uh, oh, by the way, Ian McCallum's on, one of our loyal followers. And Ian, I apologize. I need to call you. But um, uh, so, Marcelo, thank you again for coming on. Tiago, thank you for setting this up. Um, and uh, taking the time to do that. Marcelo, if you don't mind, we're just going to start by you just sharing your journey, and then uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, I'll give it to Diago from there. Yeah, first, it's my pleasure. Uh, congratulations on the work that you guys have been doing. Um, my dad always taught me that education is something that nobody can steal from us. So <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's, when I'm here, it's, I'm also learning as well. So. That's great, thank you. A little bit more, my journey is hard to talk about you <laughs> and people, but uh, from Brazil, play professional, signed when I was 16, uh, very early. But if I would go back, I would wait some maturity to kick in, but you know, life just, just, just give you opportunities, I took it. Um, play until 20, three years old, kind of that, start coaching career early, mm. uh, came to US, uh, I had, had my education over here, my soccer license are, are, are from the United States. Uh, my education is from here as well. In Brazil, I study PE, but here in US, I graduated in psychology, I have a master's in sports coaching and, uh, and sports psychology as well. Went back to Brazil, uh, coach Brazilian national team, uh, the pros, uh, first division, Premier League, second division, and came back to US uh, um, to work in the US national team. Right now, I currently to work as the head coach for the USL franchise, Austin Bold in Texas. And I'm also the general manager for the U.S. Uh, uh, Virgin Islands, the senior national team. Oh, okay. All right. So you know Vin Blaine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we worked together. Vin is great. <laughs> no, it's wonderful. He was on our show. He was on. He was on this so, as well. Yeah, he's, he's yeah, great. great. Awesome. No, that's cool. That's awesome. So thank you so much. Um, you know, quite quite the pedigree, quite the career. Um. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and let Tiago kind of take it over from here and ask a few questions. Um, we got quite a few people in the, in the room. It's great. So thank you. Um, and then when you're ready, Marcelo, just tell me when, when you want me to start the presentation. So, okay. Tiago, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thanks, Vince. Appreciate it, you know, having us. And, you know, thanks, Marcelo, again for, for coming on. And, you know, I met Marcelo through Bobby Clark, you know, when he was – Marcelo was working with the U.S. national team, and I think he was scouting. There was some – Quite a few years back and and since then we've we become good friends and you know i've been able to to stay in touch and and, and i'll say this is one of the you know uh he's a young coach you know but with a long you know his reputation kind of speaks for itself for having had a, over a decade of experience coaching at the, at the highest level in brazil and one unique thing about marcelo is that he's been able to coach in two different national team setups at the youth level in Brazil and in the U.S. So I think that's a very unique thing for uh, to for us to really gain some insight. And and now with you know uh, USL uh, Austin Bolt, I had a chance to be with them for for a week uh, during preseason and see up close just the culture and and really the way he works with his staff and his players. So uh, really excited here. So I'll I'll kind of just get it started so he can maybe start with his presentation. So Marcelo, do you wanna maybe share a little bit? 
you know, about your purpose and your, your journey, kind of, you know, the topic of why, why do we coach? And I think it'd be really interesting to hear from you, you know, why, why coaches should uh, uh, have a purpose. Yeah. Um, it's always about telling a story. That's how I feel, you know, um, and I believe, you know, we have, we have been involved with soccer for, for so long and since we are kids, you know, we, we play, we get involved. Usually it's, a, it's our parents, our family. And if you have a skill, we continue playing. In the US, there are many ways of continue playing the game. You know, you have the youth clubs, you have professional, you have the universities that, that for me is a great opportunity. I wish that my country had opportunities like that to work on education and playing the game at the same time. So, my story is I have always been around in soccer, in football, and just growing because that's what everybody taught me, you know? If you want to get to, you are in point A, you get in point B, do your work, uh, try to, 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 to work on your strengths, be different, and, and sometimes it's lucky as well. So right now I'm 40 years old, and I have been, I don't know, maybe 35 years playing, playing and being involved in this game. I started playing when I was five in Brazil, uh, futsal. And I ended up in my career in Brazil uh, four years ago. Uh, when I come back to US, uh, I have been over here for almost four years. I start questioning why, why I'm doing things, you know? Why in football? Why, why I'm doing what I'm doing? And, and also, uh, uh, um, why should I do it? Uh, uh, having a, a, a successful career, in, in, in my eyes, you know, uh, in Brazil, the seven years that stay over there in the pros, uh, I have six titles, and I and and, and I went to seven uh, uh, championship uh, games, and I lost one. In Brazil, the national team, the same thing. Uh, I think we won 95% of our titles in the three years that we have been over there. So we are in Brazil in a soccer culture, winning soccer culture, because you must win. If you win, people are going to choose you. And then I start questioning if the winning that I know, the winning that, 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 that I have learned through my career, that's it. And, and that stopped full, fulfill me, you know? And I start questioning myself why I was doing this. And a lot of people did not understand why I left Brazil such in a, in a young career, but so prestige. Uh, people were saying, oh, you had so many offers. Why you left and came back to a youth system in the United States? And, and for me, that was very simple uh, uh, to answer. Uh, I came to U.S. To, to calm down myself and to think, uh, to learn, uh, uh, to rele relearn what the U.S. was doing, because I left nine, almost nine years, uh, uh, the U.S. soccer system, it changed everything. The first time that I came here, where I met Ian Barker, was in the ODP times, you know? So that's why, for me, after the six years of evaluation and redefining myself, it is not about the X and O's first, you know? The, I always thought it was about the X and O's and use people to do it. Uh, okay, you're a good guy, you're just gonna move on. But then I realized it's more than that, you know? And life is more than that. And, and I realized that I need to go back into my life, into who I am, to identify who I am first, you know? Like, as a leader, because we are leaders, uh, uh, um, how can I get followers and not just people that sign a contract and play, you know? I want people to believe what I believe. Because in the end of the day, uh, when you will win, you just hear one thing in the interviews. This is a, we win because this is a great group. We win because this is a great environment, a great family a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. I never heard when we win or when somebody wins, we won because we play a 4-4-2 and our transition moment it was that kind. And then on the positioning play, we do this, we do that. 
this is this is very interesting you know it's very of course the excellence goals are really important the level of details that you work on the pitch uh, that So there we go. Lost his audio a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Um when trying to see it looks like he's it's trying to push through the audio. Um Coach Barker, you might have to reboot the room, but we'll see. Marcelo, you back? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, and now we can. It went out for a little bit. Apologize. Apologize. No, I went out for a little bit. So, yep. Uh, did he go out again? Yeah, I think it's locked in. Uh, I don't know if it's a. Uh... Usually it's a Wi Fi. Um, a Wi Fi issue, maybe. Yeah. I'll reboot the room one time, see if it helps. So, uh, we'll go there. Hey, Tiago. Yes. So we managed to get all of our attendees back. So thank you to the 20 attendees. Uh, we have Tiago and myself. We're just hoping that we can get Marcelo back. So there he is. Yeah. yeah, there he is. All right, boss. You can put Marcelo back on the screen and I'll hide me. Well, I've got me and Tiago. I don't see Marcelo yet, but uh, there he is. I got him. Yep. Okay, then you can put him on. I cannot from where I am. Uh, can you make me an uh, administrator? Um, I don't even see you or um, I only see myself and Tiago in the room. Oh, that's weird. Okay, here we go. Are, we're, good. I got we're good. We're good. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Good. All right. Thanks, Marcelo. <laughs> Please continue. I don't know what happened. Um, that's fine. Uh, we just need to put the presentation here. Uh, Okay. Yeah, here we go. Then, wh when did you guys lose me? Uh, when was the last thing that you guys heard? I think you're talking about redefining yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and that was the, the story about redefining myself. You know, why, why I'm in football? And football is about winning if you're in the pros. You know, uh, uh, the outcome is winning. We gotta be realistic on that. We cannot come and and, and be a, 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 a person that say, "No, I just do this because uh, it's good people." No, it's about winning, right? But there are people there, so I will go back to the environment. Okay, I realize after studying and after uh, um, practicing. Um, uh, that the, the football, the environment changes human behavior. And then I was like, okay, the environment of football, usually it is not a good overall good environment. You know, we have a lot of lies. We have a lot of greed. We have a lot of pushing backs of power. Abraham Lincoln once said that if you want to know the real man, give him power, you know? And then that's totally true on our day. <laughs> I have seen people change. Uh, I have changed um, uh, in the beginning of my career when I had power. So I got to, that's why redefining who I am was really important because I was being part of an environment, even though the good environment, soccer uh, and sports is supposed to be good. Um, but I was being part of something that was not good either, you know? And then, then I started to say, okay, I have seen a lot of people that lost their job, they're not supposed to, they're not the ones doing their own thing, you know? I have seen families being destroyed because people just come and say, okay, you go, you go, you go, I'm gonna bring my people. 
Okay, so that's where you are away to work, so that's fine, but at least take care of the other human beings that are there, you know? But I have a serious opportunity with people, and I did not appreciate that. I also seen uh, uh, blame, you know, uh, bad value. And yeah, somebody sings a static noise. My room here is clean. Tiago, do you have a clean room there? Yeah, it's better now. It's there much you go. better now. So, yeah. sorry about that. <laughs> <You're fine. laughs> Sorry about that. Thanks, Rob, for pointing that out to us. Rob in the chat box said, hey, there's a noise in the background, like another voice. So <laughs> people have questions, Vince. They can they can put questions on the chat box as well. Yeah. All right. Yeah, please continue, Marcelo. That's By the way, I loved, I loved um, when you said that, you know, coaches, when you hear coaches in press conferences, they don't, you know, they'll say, you know, we won because we had a system or – you know, we countered attacked or whatever. I mean, it was just, it wasn't their strategy and nothing to do with that. It's just the group of people that they are fortunate enough to work with. Right. And that, that was really resonating for me. That was great. So thank you. Yeah. And without people, we're not going to have anything in this earth, any business we need to rely, right. rely on people to do it. Right. You know? Right. That's why the accents and O's come after. And yep. we're going to go the next slide over here, a little bit of the process that I use nowadays. So, so talking about the style of play, uh, how am I going? How am I going to play? How am I going to choose uh, uh, the way that I'm going to perform as an institution and as a team? Uh, uh, that winning has a value now, and and it goes to the environment, you know. So coming back to the story, I was not happy with the person that I was becoming. I was not happy being part of the system. Because the system, even though that's great winning, but uh, a lot of people were getting were getting screwed through the system. And I didn't appreciate that. And I had a line of, of describing myself through this story. First, I was part of the system. Then I was disagreeing with the system. <laughs> then I was complainer. I just complained about the system. This system is about this. This system is about that. <laughs> and then one day, you know, uh, uh, I'm a believer in God, so uh, uh, that, that's my relationship with him. Then he came to me and he said, it's like my dad, you know, Marcelo, you're just a complainer, you know. What are you doing about it? I was like, man, you're so right. It's about leadership. He and my coaching, okay, having fun, blah, 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 blah. But I am doing nothing about to change the system. And then I, I realized why. Because changing systems is hard, you know. Then we start, okay, let's start studying leaders that fight the system, you know. Martin Luther King, well, he got shot, you know. Uh, then in my selfish way back then, I was like, okay, the big fighters of the system, it's people that, that, that are dead. Do I want to be a person like that, you know? Do I want to sacrifice myself to change the system, okay? And when I say to change the system, uh, let's not be uh, hypocrite, okay? Soccer is a lot of egos, it's a lot of greed, and uh, it's a lot of pushing back of power, okay? So now, how can I be successful of not being in this way? It starts with me. How can I be successful and keep winning with good values, you know? I'm still under this process. It's not easy. I'm just going to show the path that I'm doing, and this path has changed for six years now, but what is, is, is and I, I, I don't think I will, I will finish this path one day just until I die, but what is good about this new path that I'm going is the people that uh, have come to the environment and the environment speaks by itself. You know, Tiago was one that he mentioned here. When he comes and talks, it's just, uh, for me, is a reflection of my environment, you know? And I'm, const I'm constant consistently checking how I'm doing because it's not about me anymore. Uh, when I do a mistake in my environment, it's people have the freedom to say, Marcelo, you're going totally in a different track here, my friend. Look at our values, you know? Then I was like, oh, shoot. So that's the story behind uh, 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 the purpose, why I, 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 I decide to... to, to 
to try to change this a bad system that we have in place you know for me a leader construct the environment the environment changes human behavior if we have uh, bad human behavior in our environment it's up to the leader to help and to fix the problem it's not about being right and wrong anymore it's about helping you know it's about being efficient okay even the problem is not you marcelo even the problem is not me because in the end of the day it's about the power of influencing people you know so let's put good values on this um any questions on that subject before i move on to how i build my style of play then we go a little bit on the x's and o's by using culture and using values and purpose behind it. yeah no um marcelo we don't have any questions just some really good comments you know just you know they love your honesty you know problem the difference between a problem finder versus a problem solver right and no it's, it's great so let's continue we'll just uh, continue on it'd be great okay. so just a definition of style of play here okay the ah. style of play is just a particular way in which the team and the players play are playing and performing and it's influenced by culture environment of account we club personnel it's coaches and players so the style of play uh, 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 it's going to be influenced where we live the people that live there you know i'm, I'm not just talking about characteristics of player yet who are people? Who are our owners? Who are our GMs? Who are the coaches? Who are the coaching staff? Who are the players that you're gonna bring? You know, what city do you live in? What country? What are the good things about the environment? What are the bad things uh, 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 about the environment? You know, and then how I do things is studying all of this, and then I have my influence that I can bring to the table, and how my influences are good for the environment. Uh, 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 as a leader so this is the periodization route the path that i use for the ones that are interested uh, uh, um, in football in soccer on the playing side you can see over here that the roadmap the accents and those just come after a process of people okay mm -hmm. first is my identity and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna show this one uh today because that's the purpose of, of, of this call and then Uh oh. Oh, no. Froze the audio again. You know? Here we go. You're going in and out for some reason. Um. There you are. Sorry, everybody. Um. Tiago, maybe maybe you can text him and see if he can um, get in the. There he goes. Up. Oh. Yeah, he's just freezing up. I don't know freezing if it's up. the system or the Wi-Fi or what. But come uh, back in. Yeah. Um, Ian, are you still on? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Um, you might have to reboot the room again. Sorry. I'll do it one I, more time. I mean, we've only, you know, we've lost a couple of uh, of our audience, so let's. Marcelo, do we have you back? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, good, 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 good. Yeah. Um, there we go. Well, I tell you what. I, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. I don't know if it's the if it's the system or not. But let's uh, pick up where we left off and yeah, see if we can. Here we go. Finish up. Okay, awesome. Thank yep. you. So going back, it. This is what we're going to be speaking. That's what we're speaking about, the coach identity, who I, who I am, you know. Then after identify who I am, and that's a, if you want to do it right, you've got to go deep into your soul, into your into things that you are as a person, 
uh, we are we are uh, 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 the person that we are it's what the environment has shaped us you know uh, so you got to go back and sometimes the person that we are is because of our grandparents grand grandparents so it's a lot of history you know who we are and what our problems and strengths coming from so you got to identify who you are first before creating a purpose and that's what i did you know and after that then to, to do the style of play uh, then it's another topic culture the influences and then we go to x and those ro roadmaps until we have the game so i created this periodization route as a process of how 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 i build my team okay and this this is the one who i am the coaching identity one the first one it's my dna uh, today this is what i have for you guys maybe it can change tomorrow in one year in 10 years it will change because one of my goals in life is to become the best version of my, of myself you know yeah. oh marcelo it sounds great you know you're talking and uh oh might be a wi-fi issue i think that he's having there or yeah you know maybe have him close and come back in and talk about values not sure here um marcelo we can't hear you so if you can hear us okay. maybe uh just close out and click on that link again so again apologies I'm not sure what's going on with the system. So, Vince, if um, if we've lost Marcelo beyond this, I think if we can just go through the slide deck as a visual for people for the for the for the attendees, yeah, and then try to reschedule with a better connection because this is a this is a much more philosophical approach to why we coach at the elite level, which is what Marcelo does, than than X's and O's, which I really like. Right. Maybe if he can if he can share the uh, the presentation as well. Yeah, so Rob, yeah, so I'm reading Rob's message here. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, my Wi Fi is fine. So, okay, he left the room. Let's see if we can finish up. Yeah, he's when he comes back in. Fun. I will say, just I was going to ask a question if I had time. The diversity in that picture is a beautiful thing. And I'm sure it wasn't intentional in terms of the presentation today, but I, I'm really interested to see what Marcelo says about managing a diverse locker room at the professional level. Yes. Marcelo, do we have you back? Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. hearing. <laughs> All right. Well, um, sorry about this. I, I don't know if it's the Wi-Fi. I don't know, you know, I'm not sure, but maybe we can finish up with this slide because th the presentation has been wonderful. It's been outstanding. Um, and so, yeah, maybe we can just continue on. I'm going to turn off my camera to help with the bandwidth. And uh, maybe we can uh, finish up. Yeah, I'm trying to change it. I don't know if it's mine because I'm yeah. just you. But let's go. So <laughs> in the left side over here, it's the values that I work under on right now. You know, it's love God and love other human beings. Um, again, it's not easy. You know, it's easy to love a good person but love a guy that maybe just spending the money not in the right way and you know it you know like uh, uh, sometimes you want to, to kill that guy but how can i be patient how can i be uh, uh humble and, and 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 peaceful and bring the subject about because again uh, um when you leave united states maybe that's the problem that you're gonna find in soccer is about people stealing money from the club and i have found that you know uh, be brave. Uh, I gotta be brave in order to to fight the system. If if my values are right, uh, what happens if it's the owner that pay your salary? You gotta say, hey, you are wrong, you know. So, but also be brave as well to change who you are as a person. Uh, a lot of people don't even uh, want to accept that they want to change. So, brave has two meanings on that. And creativity for me is what bring people and players. To a, to a level that that people don't expect. So you are unpredictable. And being unpredictable in this game is so important in my culture. 
that's how uh, one of the high pillars of people have an idea how to beat you, but you but they can't because you if you were created all the time, you're gonna re redefine ways of winning, you know. Inclusive environment is a place where every everybody is welcome, everybody will be loved. And and we want people to come here and, and be part of us. Uh, grow mindset, facilitate learning. Over here, we're gonna help you to nurture you. You know, uh, we're gonna try to, to to teach you. We're gonna try to nurture you. But you have also your your piece on the table. You 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 need to come and you want to be better. Um, process oriented with result driven. Uh, over here, it's you gotta go through the the benchmarks or, or it's why you're here. Then you know, if you know that you gotta grow, tell me how you're gonna grow. Uh, when you're gonna grow, we're gonna help you to achieve this the, the, this process. But you gotta give us results in the end of the day, because again, we are in the pros. Uh, winning is part of, of the process, the outcome. <laughs> um, the purpose is for me as a person is use soccer as a tool to develop good leaders for the future. I realize that the bad environments, the bad values in the environments are because we have bad leadership for in my country for almost 200 years, you know? So if I can that, if I can help develop good leaders for the game, we're going to have a bad environment for the future, you know? And that's one, that's my purpose right now. Uh, using soccer to develop me and other leaders, better leaders for the future. The leadership style that I'm using uh, uh, now is situational. I lead by situation. And also the best leader take the challenge. Sometimes I'm not the best leader because I didn't have experience on it. And my assistant coach, even a player of mine can lead uh, uh, the situation. You know, I have moments here last season uh, that a player led the, the, the situation for me and he's the best leader so we can have more success. You know, and the other one is serving. We got to serve others. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's not easy. It's not easy to think about others, especially the people that you don't like. But <laughs> right now in my process, that's what I'm working on. Can I give love? Can I give compassion? Can I give patience? Can I give the truth in a, speak in a good way to the person that I don't like, that I don't want to become friends? So I, I'm in this process. And hopefully I, I can get better and master one day. <laughs> that's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, yeah, I love that uh, line there, you know. I mean, I remember listening to a TED Talk by Rita Pearson. Who, it's one of my favorite TED Talks of all time. And she's a she was a former principal. She's passed. And uh, she was a former school principal. And she was talking to teachers. And she goes, well, you like all your kids? Of course not. Right? But the key is that they can never, ever know. You know, and, and you know, I, I, I remember that. And what you just said kind of made me, re you know, remember that. But um, uh, we, we do have a few um, questions, or at least we had one from, I think it's, it's uh, per, forgive me if I'm wrong, Malik. Um, and he's talking about, he wanted to know what values, right, help shape your, you know, your philosophy. So what values do you really always make sure you have? Uh, our love is first. And I think I have been telling you, it's not just my love, because even my love is wrong. <laughs> it's God's love. And yeah. God's love for me is being patient, being honest, speaking the truth, uh, 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 trying to be all of the good values that love is, you know. So we start these values as a person. Uh, um, and then the values over here in the left side, you know. After that, I need to be brave. If I want to break a system that has been over here for so long, so many leaders, there are so many leaders higher than me in hierarchy. How can I change, help you change this, the system to be a, a good system, you know? So you start with the values of love and and always with God's love. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, uh, you know, and, and uh, the same person, Malik, uh, <laughs> He's improving on that last part. He says his patience with others is improving. He and he, I think he said that there are fifteen to seventeen different cultures on your team. Uh, is that right? Yes, and it's part of the of the style of play. Okay, Austin. Why I decide to come to Austin? Austin, they say let's keep Austin weird. 
Austin is different from the places that I have been here in the US, and we've got to be honest. Uh, for me, US has a lot of cultures, but I, I saw one day, it's a lot of cu cultures meeting in a pot, and when we stir the pot, they don't mix, but it's there, you know? They don't melt, it's just mixed there. And in Austin, it's a little bit different. They do accept cultures. I'm a foreign coach. You can, you can already say by my accent, <laughs> as soon as I speak my mouth, oh, this guy's not from here, you know? But it's not from who we are. It's about what kind of people, person we are. And even in Brazil now, when I go back to Brazil, I teach the A and Pro license in Brazil as well. And a lot of the times, my colleagues over there, they come in and just say, hey, Marcelo, this guy's coming here from Portugal now, you know? And from here, from here, say, guys, we want to welcome them. Because if they're here, somebody's believing that we cannot do a good job. So right. Uh-oh. Ah, uh, we were doing uh, good when you moved for a while. Yeah. <laughs> the, thing, the thing that's um, interesting to me is in a in a fairly short but very rich coaching career at professional level and national team level, and being from, if not the greatest soccer nation in the world, one of the greatest soccer nations, that he's found this sort of spirituality about it. This is sort of Zen situation that the winnings, the winning and losing, has now taken the secondary place to the environment and culture. So it's kind of nice when a professional coach can talk about that because he's very clear about how cutthroat and miserable and poor it can be. Yeah. He's also very high on the opportunities. Right. right. Let's see if we've got him back here. Um, back on, yeah. yeah. Is, uh, and it's why Alex Ferguson would say as well, right? You know, if you want to be successful, you got to study people. So you meet a lot of people and often coaches, and I'm a young coach, they often we try to – uh, focus too much on, on the X's and O's. You know, you go through your licensing, and, and but even that has changed, as you guys know that well. And, and, and just really trying to qualify and equip coaches on, on being not just player developers, but, but human developers. And I think that's something you know unique. You know, one of my mentors, you know, Bobby Clark, used to say something all the time that you know I, I think it's very reflective of what Marcelo is sharing. Is that it's not just he would say, you know, always know who you are where you are and what you represent. Yeah. And I think it's yeah. uh, so important as a coach that's not often really uh, taught or yeah. focused on, yeah. you know, and I think that Marcelo, you have to really be intentional of, of knowing who you are and knowing where you are and what you represent. And I think it's very unique, you know, Marcelo's experience of having coached at the national level, youth level in Brazil, and then also doing it in the U.S. Yeah. And, in such a diverse group at the, you know, at the pro level, you know, he has guys that, you know, from um, playing in the World Cup finals to a, a youngster, 18-year-old who who came from Montverde Academy, 18-year-old African player, you know, and seeing how, you you know, maybe that might be the, the, the key question here to close up at some point here is just, uh, I think something Ian was referring is, uh, you know, how do you manage that diverse environment what are some tips that you know i don't know if marcelo can hear us now i don't know if he's back or not but um and maybe that might be something that, that a follow-up discussion on on you know at that level how do you manage that diverse environment what are some key things you know yeah and, and you know maybe what we could do is reschedule marcelo to maybe to come on some other time next week hi marcelo how are you oh now we can't hear you Oh, you're, you're, you got to, your sound is off. Okay, I'm back. There you go. Very good. Um, Marcelo, we don't want to take too much of your time. Um, I mean, it looked like you were going in your bathroom there for a minute. I was a little scared. <laughs> but uh, no, uh, seriously, th um, by the way, uh, you know what the nickname is for Bobby Clark, right, Tiago? It's it's S-O-B, sweet old Bobby. <laughs> sweet old Bobby. Awesome. Bobby. Yes, that's what they. That's what Coach uh, Mike Freitag calls him. S O B, sweet old Bobby. But um, Marcelo, maybe if if our, if we can, we can have maybe a part two, maybe sometime soon. Um, just so we we can uh, try and get this back on. We do have a question though, Marcelo, and hopefully you can answer it. Is are we allowed to share your presentation? Why left? Um, Tiago, do you think we're allowed to share his presentation? I don't I want. Think, to. But it, yeah, well, I can ask him, but I think yes. I think you. You know, it's not a. There's not a lot of details that he wouldn't mind. You know, doesn't have a. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 
All right. Well, um, I'll give it another 15 seconds to see if we can get Marcel Vince, back on. Vince, who are we bringing in on Thursday? Thursday, we're bringing in Pepe Galvin. Uh, and Tiago is going to be with us as well. And, and where is Pepe uh, coaching? Yes. Uh, he's going to talk about um, Pepe on Thursday. Yes. Uh, just uh, uh, the mental performance side, uh, zero excuses uh, to win. Yep. You know, kind of helping players develop a money mindset. So he works with uh, a lot of, you know, between Mexico and the U.S., he's, you know, top players. So. Yep. Hey, guys, come back if you guys can hear me. Yes, we can. We can. Thank you. I put on my phone right now, so. Let's <laughs> see <laughs> Hope you got a good data plan. Well, Marcelo, let's just, uh, first off, just thank you so much uh, for coming on. Maybe we can get a part two, right, okay. next week. If you don't mind, I'll, I'll reach out to you uh, so we can get you back on. And you and Tiago, if Tiago has time, right, to come back on. I know Tiago's very busy too, but it's a uh, real quick question. Some people are asking if you wouldn't mind sharing your slide deck or the presentation. That's fine. You guys, no problem. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, but I'll reach out to you so we can get a, sketch, a part two. But what you said today was really impactful. Matter of fact, there are some comments in there that people are saying, hey, I, maybe I need to reflect here a little bit and rethink what I'm doing. Right? At the end of the day, that's your message. So yeah. thank you so much. And uh, Tiago, thank you so much for uh, for setting this up. We'll get it. We'll get it next week. We'll get you next week. Um, yeah, yeah. Yep. So we have Pepe Galvin on uh, Thursday. Uh, zero excuses uh, to win. And uh, we'll reconnect with you again, Marcelo. And again, God bless. And thank you so much. And Coach Parker, thank you for, for helping. Thank you, Marcelo. And thank you, Tiago. Thank you. It's always appreciated. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.